فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا ذا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له يقول الحق وهو يهدي السبيل واشهد ان سيدنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى اله واصحابه والتابعين لهم باحسان الى يوم الدين اما بعد و ان ذا سيره اوف ذا بروفيت عليه الصلاه والسلام لاست ليسن ان اور سيره وي سبوك اباوت ذا مسنجر صلى الله عليه وسلم واي ديد الله سند ذا بروفيت ان جزيره العرب ذا ارابيان بينينسولا سو ان شاء الله تعالى توداي كارين اون فروم وير وي ليفت اوف Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he sent Nabi Allah Muhammad, he was brought out as a prophet and a messenger, min ashaddi al-fatarat, the times when it was the most severest in the Arabian Peninsula, in what it has gone through, the darkness, and how low the, the community and the people's affairs was going down. So the people required some hope, something, something to come about. And at this particular time, أصعب مرحلة uh, the, uh, the worst of, of this time is when the Prophet عليه الصلاة والسلام came out. الإمام أحمد narrated in his Musnad and Al Bukhari رحمه الله in his كتاب أدب المفرد بسند صحيح a chain which is authentic عن المقداد بن عامر رضي الله تعالى عنه مقداد رضي الله مقداد بن عامر رضي الله عنه he said والله باي الله لقد بعث الله النبي الله سيد نبي الله محمد على أشد حال بعث عليها فيه نبي من الأنبياء الله برؤى نبي الله محمد at, at the hardest time in which Allah could send out a prophet في فترة الجاهلية he brought him out in a duration when the jahiliya was at its pinnacle ما يرون the people never saw أن دينا أفضل من من عبادة الأوثان. The best religion to them was worshiping idols. That was the best religion. Somebody would place an idol, and they would that was their god. And remember, this idol sometimes would be made out of dates. So if they felt hungry, they would eat the god. That's how low the community were. فجاء بفرقان فرق به بين الحق والباطل. The prophet came with the furqan. Furqan here is the distinguisher. So he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he distinguished between the truth and the falsehood. وَفَرَّقَ بَيْنَ الْوَالِدِ وَوَلَدِهِ And he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also distinguished, he also distinguished between a parent and the children. Miqdad says, حَتَّى إِنْ كَانَ الرَّجُلُ لَيَرَى وَالِدُهُ وَوَلَدُهُ أَوْ أَخَاهُ كَافِرًا That a parent will see his own child or the child will see his own parents on the other side of the fence. That the child will see his mother as a disbeliever. They were disbelievers. And you see the child is a believer. Or the child is a believer and the parents are disbelievers. The Prophet distinguished between the people. Within the household there are believers and unbelievers. And this individual, Allah opened his heart, took the unlock off with Iman. Knowing أنه إن هلك دخل النار That this individual knows If his father or his child who's in disbelief dies Then he's going to enter the hellfire That's how much the Iman became and Remember, the reason why Miqdad is mentioned this is because it, Arabs could not reach a point to disrespect their father like that or their parents To think that their parents are going to enter the hellfire But then his Prophet ﷺ succeeded in this To convince them that if you don't come with this Iman and you don't believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whether it be your parents or whether it be your children, the hellfire will take them and so this was worrying. فَلَا تَقِرُّ عَيْنُهُ وَيَعْلَمُ أَنَّ حَبِيبَهُ فِي النَّارِ And because they love their parents and their parents and their children and their ancestry, it was something they put all their efforts in making sure that they guide their children to Islam, their parents to Islam or their children. Each one will put his effort in. And that's why the ayah came down. وَالَّذِينَ يَقُولُونَ Those who say رَبَّنَا هَبْ لَنَا مِنْ أَزْوَاجِنَا وَذُرِّيَّاتِنَا قُرَّةَ أَعْيُنْ وَجْعَلْنَا لِلْمُتَّقِينَ إِمَامًا That their supplication was this. 
oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provide to us and give to us that which brings warmth to, the, to our eyes regarding our spouses and make our offspring, our lineage, something we become happy by seeing them. The, the good that they're coming with, the iman and the taqwa. And Allah says in the Quran, لَقَدْ مَنَّ اللَّهُ عَلَى الْمُؤْمِنِينَ إِذْ بَعَثَ فِيهِمْ رَسُولًا مِنْهُمْ يَتْلُ عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتِهِ وَيُزَكِّيهِمْ وَيُعَلِّمُهُمُ الْكِتَابُ وَالْحِكْمَةِ وَإِنْ كَانُوا مِنْ قَبْلُ لَفِي الضَّلَالِ مُبِينَ That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He blessed us when He sent out Nabi Allah Muhammad as a messenger. A messenger from within us. From what? From what? From amongst us. He would recite the verses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala onto us. He purifies us. He teaches us the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and He teaches us the sunnah. وَإِنْ كَانُوا Even that the people were upon before the Prophet came مِنْ قَبْلُ لَفِي الضَّلَالِ مُبِينَ The people were upon clear-cut misguidance. So when he came, he took them out of that misguidance. So this is the time that the Prophet came. And the situation in the Arab Peninsula was like this. Now inshaAllah ta'ala we're going to be speaking about النَّسَبُ النَّبَوِيُّ sharif The Prophet's lineage. Our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his lineage فَوَخَيْرُ أَهْلِ الْأَرْضِ The best of people. He is the best of creation. Alayhi salatu wasalam. Our Prophet is the best of any individual who had come to this earth. From the people of this earth. The inhabitants of this earth. Our Prophet is the best. And his lineage, the Prophet's lineage, alayhi salatu from himself to his forefathers and upwards, it is also from the most honorable lineages there were. He was from the best of lineages, alayhi salatu wasalam. Even his enemies would testify to that. And they would acknowledge that. Abu Sufyan, who was the Prophet Sallallahu enemy, staunch enemy, didn't like the Prophet alayhi salatu before Islam. Even he admitted to it. When Hiraqla Azim al-Rum, the Roman Hiraqla asked the Prophet about the Prophet, what did he say to him? Kayfa nasabuhu fikum? What's his lineage like you guys? I mean, how do you guys see him? What's his lineage like? And then they said, Huwa fina du nasabin. Abu Sufyan responded by saying, he's from a very high lineage. From amongst us, the way we see him is he's a prophet, he's an individual who has a high lineage. His nasab is good. So Abu Sufyan, who wants to find any way to tell the people not to follow the prophet, even he admitted that the Prophet ﷺ was from a, a great lineage. Alayhi salatu wasalam. His name is What's his name, Zakaria? Oh, I want five names from you. Muhammad, Ibn Abdullah, Ibn Abdul Muttalib, hey. Ibn Hashim, hey. Ibn Kilat. Hey, five. Hey, what's the Prophet's five's name? Count. Count as much as you can. Okay, what about you? Five. Hey, what about you? Five. Hey. Hey, what about you? Hey. Hey, what about Yad Samit? Okay, Muhammad? Hey, Muhammad ibn Abdullah, hey. Yeah? Ibn Muttalib. Ibn Abdul Muttalib. Abdullah is Abdul Muttalib's father. Hey, what is it? Muhammad? Hey, what's it? Muhammad ibn Abdullah, hey. Ibn? Ibn Abdul Muttalib? Ibn Hashim? Hey, Ismail? No, Ismail, Ismail, I'm behind you. Hey, Muhammad? Yeah. Sorry, sorry, Ismail, your little brother, Karen, hey. Your name's Ibrahim, sorry. Yeah? Hey, Muhammad? Muhammad ibn Abdullah, hey. Muhammad ibn Abdullah? Muhammad ibn Abdullah? Hey, Sa'ad, count ten. Ten. Hey, Amran, you looked, so you count ten, inshallah, since you looked. Just look ten, 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 no problem. Rasulullah, ten names. Hey, Fadl, five. Muhammad ibn Abdullah. Hey. Hey. Ibn Hisham. Abdul Mannaf, hey. Hey, Muhammad. Muhammad. Ibn Abdullah. 
محمد بن عبد الله بن عبد المطلب ابن هاشم ابن عبد المناف ابن الكلاف هاي ولا بقيه محمد هاي تون لوك تون لوك بس فاين فلو بي راي اي اس نو هاي محمد هاي ابن عبد المطلب ابن هاشم you just picked that up now jazakallah for your honesty jazakumullah khairan this is the person we should love the most, right? True or false? Billahi alaykum brothers. Yeah? What's your name? Your, your name. Count your name. Yeah. Oh, your own name? Yeah. Oh, I see. There's no reason to blame you then. So, the Somalis, they know. How many names of yours do you know? Like six, seven. Five of your own. What about Rasulullah? What about you? Five. Do you know more than five names of yours? Six, seven. Rasulullah, how much do you know? The reason I'm putting pressure on everybody right now and I'm pointing at people is I want, I want you to know the severity of this. I don't like generally to pressure people like that and to make them feel uncomfortable. But this is Asl al Usul, ya ikhwa. It's foundation. Wallahi. Wallahi is a foundation. It's embarrassing. It is embarrassing that you don't know the Prophet's name and you know your name more. Extremely embarrassing. It's extremely embarrassing. Today, if you leave that room and you walk away, let it be the last time anyone asks you about the Prophet's name, except that you can count at least five of it, if not more. At least five names of his, or even more. His name is Alayhi Salatu Salam, Muhammad ibn Abdullah ibn Abdul Muttalib. So it's Muhammad ibn Abdullah ibn Abdul Muttalib ibn Hashim ibn Abdi Manaf. So it's Muhammad ibn Abdullah ibn Muhammad, so Muhammad ibn Abdullah ibn Abdul Muttalib ibn Hashim ibn Abdi Manaf. If you learn those five, that's enough. That's enough. If you add on to it, it shows your love is more. Good. Then it is, after Abdi Manaf is Qusay. After Abdi Manaf, the fifth one is Qusay. After Qusay is Kilab. Kilab after him, it's Murrah. Murrah is Kaab ibn Lu'ay ibn Ghalib ibn Fihrid ibn Malik ibn Nadrah ibn Kilarat ibn Khuzaymat ibn Mudrakin ibn Ilyasin ibn Mudarin ibn Nizarin ibn Ma'dan ibn Adan am Adnanin. This is from up to Adnan, his name is Itifaq. There's a consensus amongst the ulama. There's no dispute. This amount I mentioned now is a what? It's a qadr which is Mujma'u alayhi min nasabi Rasulillah. It's unanimously agreed upon. Hafiz ibn Kathir said, Ibn Kathir said in his kitab Al-Fusul, Fi Seerat Al-Rasul, Wa hadha al-nasab al-ladhi suqnahu ila adnana, la miryata fihi wa la niza'a, wa huwa thabitu bil-tawatur wal-ijma'a. This name that we mentioned from him, Muhammad up to Adnan, is consensus, and it's transmitted to us by tawatur, by multitude narrations. Anything after Adnan is where the dispute comes. The scholars, this is where they differ. After Adnan to Ismail is all weak. There's no authentic chain for that. So now we know his name, and inshallah ta'ala, anyone who wants can go to the recordings and they can even look it up on the internet. Our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his lineage is pure. It's original. He said about himself, as Bukhari narrated in his Sahih min hadith Abi Huraira, I was sent out min khayru quruni bani adam qarnan faqarnan The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said I was sent out min khayru quruni bani adam The best of generations of the, the, uh, the, the children of Adam The best era I was sent out Hatta kuntu min al-qarni alladhi kuntu minhu Until I became the time in which I came out he also said, alayhi salatu was salam, as Imam Muslim narrated in hadithi, wa thirat ibn asqa, that the Prophet said, inna Allah hastafa kinana, Allah chose kinana, Allah is the one who chose kinana, min walad Ismail from the children of Ismail, wa astafa Quraishan min kinana, Allah chose from Quraysh kinana, wa astafa min Quraishin, Allah also chose from Quraysh Hashim, and he chose me, Nabi Allah Muhammad, 
min bani Hashim from the children of Hashim. That's what the Prophet said. Allah chose Kinana from the children of Ismail. And he chose Quraysh from Kinana. And he chose Bani Hashim from Quraysh. And he chose me from Bani, Quraysh, uh, Bani, Hisha, Bani Hashim. This shows what? That the Prophet has his lineage. Also, the other thing we need to know is that the Prophet from since the day Allah created Miladul Wakti, Nabilahi Adam, till today. The day Allah created Adam till Nabilahi Muhammad's time, Nabilahi Muhammad's time, no one from in his lineage came out from a wedlock. Our Prophet ﷺ. Fornication and adultery, no. The Prophet is from a lineage who all of them are halal, meaning they are through marriage. Tahara, pure, his lineage. He said that about himself. The Prophet said in the hadith that Abu Nu'ayn narrated in his Dala'il al nubuwah bi sanadin hasanin bi shawahidi when you bring all of its chains together that Ali ibn Abi Talib said kharajtu min nikahin. The Prophet said, I came out through a nikah, a marriage. Walam akhruj min sifahin. And I never came out from zina. Min ladun Adam, from the time of Adam, ila an waladani abi wa ummi, until my mother and father gave birth to me. Since the day of Adam till the day of Nabi Muhammad came, his lineage, every single person, there was marriage, there was a nikah. Lam yusibni min sifah al jahiliyati shay'un. None of the zina of jahiliya came to me. So when we see a person draw the Prophet والسلام, and insult the Prophet and call the Prophet names, yeah, whether it be Danish or whether it be British or whatever it be, say to an individual, count how many lineages you are. He doesn't, he doesn't know who's his third father or his fourth father. And Allah said this to us in the Quran, inna shani'aka huwa al-abtar. A person who's th- his second, his, he doesn't know his mother slept with a boyfriend or whatnot, if he's zina or halal. He doesn't know fourth up, up the ladder. He doesn't know. He's talking about the Prophet ﷺ and insulting him will not go anything to him. And this is an honor that the Prophet ﷺ can only say about himself. No one here can say that. That's tahara. That's pure cleanse. Tahir lineage that he came from Now we're going to, we're going to speak about the Prophet's family. Our Prophet ﷺ he came from a family known as the Hashimi, 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 Hashimi family. In Arabic, it's called Al Usratul Hashimiya. In English, they call it Hashimiyites, I think. That's the Prophet's grandfather, Hashim ibn Abdi Manaf. So we need to start with him, since the family is named after him. Who is Hashim? And this is, we're going to make our way down until the Prophet. Hashim's name is Amr. Hashim's name is actually Amr. That's not his real name. Hashim is not his real name. He was an individual, Hashim, a man who was of high caliber, the sharaf in kabir, an honorable individual. Hashim was an individual who took over the catering and the caring for the people who would come to do their pilgrimage in the Haram. He took it upon himself. As-siqayati wal-rifada. as here means he would water them, give them water to drink, and he was the one who would give them food to eat. He was called this name Hashim, this name Hashim. It came from the term Hashem al-Tharida. Hashem al-Tharida. He created the crumbler of bread. He took the bread and he would crumble the bread and he would take meat. He would add the meat into the bread and he would then add the, uh, the soup that comes from the meat. He would add it to the uh, bread and he would give it to the people of Hajj. And this, in the Arabic language, is called a what? It's called a thareed. Thareed in the Arabic language. But Idarika, do you know what the Prophet said about the thareed when he was talking about his wife, daughter, his wife Aisha? He said, Aisha is compared to all of the women, how the thareed is compared to all the other food. And the thareed was the food that the Arabs loved the most. صح? It was the food that the Arabs loved the most. Hashim took it on himself to feed them the food that they loved the most. And when the Hujjaj and the people of Hajj would come and the people would do pilgrimage, he would make sure that he would cater for them. He would give them food and he would give them drink. And Hashim was the one who sanctioned and set the two journeys that the Quraysh started to do, which is Rihlat al-Shita'i wa Saif. 
the winter and the summer tradings that Quraysh used to do, Hashim was the one who legislated that. And he was very, very well known. He would stay in Mina and he would go to Buzdarifa and Arafah and he would serve, on it, he himself would, he would serve the bread, he would serve the meat, he would give dates and he would give people water. وَلِذَلِكَ the poet, the poet he said عَمْرُ الَّذِي هَشَمَ الثَّرِيدَ لِقَوْمِهِ عَمْر Hashim is the one who crumbled the bread for his people. وَرِجَالُ مَكَّةَ مُسْنِتُونَ عِجَافُ And the people of Mecca were going through hunger and food, need of food. سُنَّتْ إِلَيْهِ الرِّحْلَتَانِ كِلَاهُمَا He's the one through his tongue it was legislated the two journeys. سَفَرُ الشِّتَاءِ وَرِحْلَةُ الْأَصْيَافِ Summer and winter. Now, I want you to ponder here. The Prophet was from a people who were leaders. Are you with me, brothers? And if you want to control a people, you have to have some characteristics. Generosity, trustworthiness. And you have to have... You have to be a very generous person. A people who are generous, who gives, can control something. When the Prophet came to Medina, our Prophet, when he came to Medina, he never ever went to any of the tribes in Medina and said to them, you have to get rid of the one of this leader, you have to get rid of this leader, you have to get rid of this leader. He let them have their leaders that were running the tribes, our Prophet, except one leader. He chose him to remove. He told him to be removed. And one of the reasons why he was removed is because he was a stingy individual. A person who never gave, he was bakhil. And if a person is stingy, he does not give, he, is not, he doesn't open his hand to give what Allah has given him, then this person cannot run anything and he can't control anything. And this is what he was, Hashim, was very well known for. Hashim, when he became very old and he was on his deathbed, he gave his farewell, he passed his legacy and his efforts over to his son, uh, so, sorry, to his brother, so his brother. He passed it over to his brother. Al-Muttalib. Muttalib is the brother of Hashim. They're both from the same father. Abdul Manaf gave birth to them. Abdul Manaf gave birth to four, bro four brothers. Okay? Muttalib is from the brother of Hashim. So when he became sick and ill, he passed it over to his brother, Muttalib. And the Siqaya was passed over to him. But before Hashim died, before Hashim died, Hashim traveled to Sham as a trader before he died and then he went through to Sham he went to a place called Medina Yathrib which was called Yathrib at that time and he married a woman by the name of Salma bint Amr who was from the people of Bani Adi ibn al-Najjar he met her and he married her there Hashim was a very respected man even when he went to these people who weren't his people when he went they respected him so they married their daughter off to him and Selma, she gave birth, she gave birth to a child who he named Sheba, or she named Sheba. He, on the other hand, Hashim, as soon as she became pregnant, he left and he went to Gaza, Palestine, and that's where he died. Hashim died and he never ever managed to see his son Sheba. Abdim. Uh, sorry, uh, Muttalib, who's the brother of Hashim, has now taken over the affairs. He provides for the people. He gives what his brother used to give. Food, drink, everything. But then what happened was, Muttalib heard of a news that he didn't know of. Which is that his brother, Sheba, sorry, his brother Hashim gave birth to a boy by the name of Sheba. And that baby, that son of his brother, is in Medina. So what he did was, he took a riding beast and he went. He went to Medina and he said to the mother, Salma, he said to her, Salma bint Amr, let me take this boy. Let me take this boy from you. So she refused. She said, no, you're not going to take him. He's going to stay with me. He said, if he stays in Medina, these are not his people. But if he comes to Mecca, he's going to be with his people. And he's going to come to a place where he's known and he's recognized and he's appreciated. 
So don't let him stay with you. So he convinced her for a very long time and he said, if you don't give me your, your son, I'm not going to leave here. So she gave him um, uh, Shayba. So Shayba came with his uncle and Muttalib. And when they entered Mecca and the people saw Muttalib and they saw Shayba, they thought that Muttalib had received a slave. So they called the kid Abdul Muttalib, the slave of Muttalib. You with me? The slave of what? Muttalib. But his name is what? Shayba. Rather, the people used to call him because of his nobility, they used to call him Shaybat al Hamd. His name was Shayba, but they called him Shaybat al Hamd, the praiseworthy one. Everybody who saw Shayba would praise him. But his name became famous as Abdul Muttalib. Do you know why the name Abdul Muttalib came from now? Because of his uncle. But when his uncle saw the people, he said, Why hakum destruction be to you guys? ibn akhi, Hashim. This is Hashim. This is my nephew. Qadim to bihi min al Madinati. I bought him from Medina. But you know the people, they will stick something on you, will stick. Abdul Muttalib stuck on him. So he became known as Abdul Muttalib. Muttalib became sick. He became very old. And so he passed on to his son. Uh, so his nephew. His nephew, uh, uh, Shayba, the legacy. He said, I don't see anyone more befitted than you. Muttalib, uh, sorry, Abdul Muttalib, Shayba al Hamd, is an individual who surpassed his forefathers. He was better than Hashim. And he was also better than what? And he was also better than his uncle Muttalib. He had some unique characteristics, that which they didn't have before him. He is an individual, his appearance always gave Heba. Whenever somebody saw him, they respect him, venerate him, honoring him. He never entered onto somebody, Abdul Muttalib, except that they would lift their heads high up in honor and respect of him. And later we're going to see even Abraha. When the, uh, Abraha saw uh, Abdul Muttalib, he couldn't hold himself but to respect him. He was that type of person. Muttalib, Abdul Muttalib, was an individual who took on all of the previous characteristics that you would find in his uncle and his granddad. And his father, sorry. The characteristics of his own father and his uncle, both of their characteristics were in him. They were present in him. And he became not only famous in the Arabian Peninsula like his father and what? And his uncle. Rather, he became more well known even in the neighboring places. <clears throat> when the leader of Yemen took over, Abdul Muttalib, he met him and he went and visited him. Ma'di Karab, Saif ibn Udi Yazinin who was the leader of Yemen and he became appointed as the leader of Yemen, Abdul Muttalib actually went and visited him and gave him gifts and he left. So he was somebody who even they respected and the news that they heard of him. At Abdul Muttalib's time, two extra extraordinary, amazing events took place. Two of the most unprecedented events had happened at his time that even... The Arabs have never heard of or seen. The first of the events that took place was Hafru Bi'ri Zamzam. The event of Zamzam water. Undigging the Zamzam water. And the second one is Haditatul Ifk. The issue of the elephant. So inshallah ta'ala we'll try to do the first one bi al kareem The Zamzam water. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who provides, he gives water. And the Arabs, as you know, they live in a desert. And their main supply needs to be water. They need to receive water to drink. The story, I'm going to fully narrate it from Dala'ilun Nubuwah by Bayhaqi. Bayhaqi brings it with a senad which is authentic from Ali ibn Abi Talib. And the story is as follows. Abdul Muttalib himself said, Inni la na'imun, I was sleeping one day. Abdul Muttalib was sleeping. Somebody came to him in his dream. Fakalali, the person said to him, Go and undig 
Taiba. And Taiba means here some pure place, which is of course the Zamzam water. Then he said, I said to the person who was saying to me in my dream, Andig, Taiba. I said to him, Wamat Taiba, what's Taiba that you're talking about? When I said that to him, Thumma Dahaba Ami, he left me. As soon as he said that to me, he left me. Then he said to me, when it was the next day and I slept again, a person came to me and he said the same thing to me this time, but he just said to me, Uhfur Barra. And then I said to him, Wama Barra. What is Barra? And Barra here again is referring to the Zamzam water, but the usage of the word here right now is Barra, meaning that this water is for those who are obedient. Then I said to him, Wama Barra. What's Barra that you're talking about? Thumma Dahab Anni, he left me. When it was the next day I was lying down, he came to me again and he said to me, Ihfur am Uhfur al Madmunata. And dig Madmuna. I then said to him, Wama Madmuna, what's Madmuna that you're talking about? And then he left me again. Then the night the next day he came to me again. He said to me, Go and undig the Zamzam. I said to him, Wama Zamzamu, what's the Zamzam? He said a description and he told me where it's all located. Abdul Muttalib saw this all in his dream. When the affairs of the Zamzam became clear to him and where it was located, he got out of his bed. He realized that there's something to this. He took his son with him, Al Harith ibn Abdul Muttalib. He said to his son, Come with me. So his son went with him. And that was the only child that he had. So he said to him, his son, come with me. And he said to his son, stand here and guard me from the people. Don't let anyone harm me. Abdul Muttalib, he started to, uh, started to dig. And as he started to dig, the, the moist started to come out from the water, a bit of moist. And there were some of the people of Quraysh standing around Abdul Muttalib, looking what he's doing. As he saw the moist, Abdul Muttalib kabbar. He said, Allahu Akbar. This was something that the Arabs already had. He said that. When he said that, Quraysh heard of it. So they came running to him. And they said to him, Ya Abdul Muttalib, Inna bi'ru abina Ismail. You know this is not just yours. This is the well of Ismail, our father, all of us. They're all from Ismail, and this is our father, Ismail. Uh, we also have rights in it with you. Share it and, and, and be generous. Abdul Muttalib said, Ma'ana bifa'ilin. I'm not going to share it with you. Now, what their discussion here is, is not to share. He wasn't refusing them to drink from it. He would let them drink from it. But who's going to be the manager of it? Who's the one who's going to control it? Whose leadership, who's this leadership does it fall under? He was saying mine. He said, I'm not going to give you guys any leadership and you're not going to share this with me. Allah specified this on me. He said, This is specific to me. I was the only one who was showing the dream. and I, There's a reason why. They said, no. We're not going to let go of it with you. Abdul Muttalib was a man of his people. They respected him and he respected them. He then said to them, what do you guys think we should do? They said, what do you think we should do? He said, if we have disputed one another, then let's find an arbitrary. Somebody's going to get in between us and judge us in these affairs. Then they said, there's a kahina, a fortune teller, who is from the people of Bani Sa'di Hudayn. She was a respected woman. Her decision was taken serious. Take the matter to her. He said, no, I'm okay. They got ready. They prepared. Uh, Abdul Muttalib prepared 20 men from his people of Abdul Manaf. They got their horses ready and they made their way. Quraysh, they got 20 men and they made their way. They got together, they, they are traveling together as well, all of them. As they are all traveling, the 20 of them, the water finished from Abdul Manaf. His water finished. When the water finished from Abdul Manaf, Abdul Manaf said to them, can you, guys, can you guys give me water to drink? And they said to him, 
لا نو no. نحن نخشى على انفسنا مثل ما اصابكم وي ار فيرفول اوف اس انديورينج وات يو ار انديورينج وي ار سكيد ذات وات هابن تو يو ماي هابن تو اس وي نيد تو كيب اور ووتر عبد المطلب بيكام فيري ستريسفول هي بيكام فيري وريد اند ذن هي سيد ات از نوت هارد فور الله سبحانه وتعالى for him to take me out of this situation and to bring about water for us somehow. And then Abdi Manaf stood up and he went on his riding beast, his camel, and his camel's leg was standing on somewhere. When his camel's leg went up, water gushed from there. When the water gushed, they all ran to drink from it. And when they ran to it, they all said to Abdi, Abdi Muttalib, you are in a, indeed, you are an individual who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has wanted. Wallahi la nukhasimuka fi zamzami abadan. We're never going to argue with you in the affairs of the zamzam. Allah provided water for you here, and he's the one who gave you the zamzam. Inna alladhi saqaka hadha al-ma'i. The one who provided for you this water now is the one who provided for you the zamzam water. It's yours. Do what you wish with it. And we're not going to go to that woman. We surrender it for you. And they gave it all to Abdul Muttalib. And this, as I said to you, this qissa, Bayhaqi brings it in his Dala'il al nubuwa Sanaduha Sahih, his chain of narration is authentic. Abdul Muttalib at this point, he realized something. Even though they gave it to him, and Allah's support came his way, he realized that he's missing something. He doesn't have enough boys. He doesn't have enough boys. He's only got one, Al Harith ibn Abdul Muttalib. So he made a dua. Abdul Muttalib made dua that if Allah gives him 10 boys, 10 boys, that he's going to slaughter one of them for him. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he gave him nine. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he gave him nine extra and he finished the 10 for him. And that we're going to be speaking about, inshallah ta'ala, later. Let's take another 15 minutes. Hadith al-Fili, the event that took place regarding the field. This was the second largest event that took place. The Arab history has never seen the likes of this event. And this issue for them was what? That something big is going to happen. And that is the case. Because that year that the Hadith al-Fil happened, the event of the elephant was the year who was born? Our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So that year was a year of an event. And Allah wanted something for the Arabs. And Allah wanted to show them the affairs related to the Kaaba and the greatness regarding it. The issue was that Abraha Al-Ashram, whose name is Al-Abraha, Abraha Al-Ashram, who was a representative of An-Najashi. And this Najashi is not the Najashi that took Islam. No. The Najashis are many. This was another Najashi. Okay? And every person who controlled Abyssinia was known as Najashi, just like everybody who controlled Egypt was known as Pharaoh. That name is the name they all took on. So Najashi, who was a leader of uh, Abyssinia, had a representative and a person who was under his leadership in Al Yemen. He was in in Al Yemen, and his name was Abraha Al Ashar. Abraha wanted to build a church, never seen the likes of it. I made that decision. I'm going to build a church. This church is going to be known. And the reason why he was building it was because he wanted to build it for Najashi. So he called it Al Qulayyas. Al Qulayyas, he called, he called it. He wrote a letter to uh, Najashi. When he wrote a letter to him, he told him, Inni qad banaytu laka ayyuhal maliku. O king, I have built for you. Kanisatan a church. 
لم يبنى مثلها the likes of it hasn't ever been built before لملك لملك for a king no king has ever been built the likes of this when this issue happened an Arab man heard of this event that happened and that he's trying to build something a Bedouin Arab man who was from the people of Kinana the matter became very hard for this man he's a Bedouin man but what he was he nurtured with he was nurtured with the love of the Kaaba and the honoring of the Kaaba and how this man wants to divert the people from the Arabs the purpose why he built it was for Najashi and also to divert the Arabs from going to the pilgrimage he wanted the Arabs to come to this place and this to be the focus point but this Bedouin man he was nurtured and he grew to respect the Kaaba and know the value of it so he couldn't hold himself so what did he do he went and he went to the church he visited it and he entered into it at night time and then he done his call of nature he took his feces he gathered it and he rubbed it against the walls of the church he rubbed it on the Qibla, the, 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 the place of focus and he left in the morning and he took the dead corpse of animals and he threw it inside the church and he left in the morning what they saw was a destroyed church the smell and everything and the corpse that he brought in so he got him angry Abraha he got extremely angry and he made a covenant and an oath he said, I'm going to go to this house, the Kaaba, and I'm going to destroy it. So Abraha prepared an army, a great, powerful army. We'll stop there, inshallah ta'ala, and we'll carry on next Saturday, bi karim Anything which I have said that was wrong and incorrect is from me, shaytan and Allah and His Messenger are free from it. Subhanak Allahumma bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayhi.